Hi, I'm Brenda Edmonds. I'll be your instructor for this class this semester. And in this first video, I want to just talk a little bit about some strategies for how to be successful in this class. The first strategy that I would really suggest that's key for any student in this class is to make sure that you schedule time for yourself to work on this class. Uh, it's important that you think about working on this class a little bit every day, or at least as many days a week as you can. Uh, there's a lot of research that it's better for long-term understanding if you do smaller sections of studying and learning rather than large marathon sections of studying. And so, you know, schedule a little bit of time every day to work on this class. Uh, the other thing about scheduling time for yourself to be successful in this class is to make sure that you start early in the week. All of our assignments are due uh, once a week, and so you really should start on them about a week before they're due. Uh, there's a schedule in your syllabus, a daily schedule, suggested what to work on each day for a five-day week, uh, so that you'd have about five out of seven days that you would work on that material. So my suggestion is to follow that or adapt it as necessary, but to start early in the week, about five days, maybe seven days before it's due. Uh, one of the things that I see for students who are not successful in online calculus is that they tend to start their work late, later than students who are successful. Uh, and so that might mean only a couple days before things are due is when they start on them. And that tends to get later and later as the semester goes on. Students who are doing that often are just kind of trying to get things done and not really able to give it the attention it needs to actually learn the content. And so they might get their assignments completed, but they haven't really learned it. So when it comes time for an exam, they're not able to demonstrate any understanding. So just make sure that you start early, give yourself a good chance for success. That way, if you run into trouble, you have a little complication in your life, or you need some help with something, that gives you time to adapt and make sure you get things done before they're due. The other strategy that I would like to suggest is to make sure that you really focus on understanding the material. Uh, you've all made it this far to Calculus 3. You understand that calculus builds and builds and builds. And for this class, maybe more than any other calculus class you've had, that's very true. Um, each week, you're going to have videos that you're suggested to watch. You're going to have some sections out of the textbook that I uh, suggest that you read and focus on some specific examples. And then you're going to have some online homework each week. So you want to make sure that you really focus on doing all of those things and also taking notes as you do those things. So watching the videos and reading the textbook is a lot like going to class in a traditional class. If you skip those things or rush through those things and don't give them the attention they need, it's like skipping class. And then you're trying to just play catch up and do the homework and maybe just trying to get it completed without really focusing on understanding. So take, take notes on those videos. The nice thing about a video, as opposed to a regular in-class lecture, is that you can pause the video, you can go back, you can listen to it again, you can fill in some gaps if there's something you missed. Take notes, especially on the parts of the textbook that I've suggested you focus on. Each week's study guide is gonna have a few things out of the textbook to pay particular attention to this theorem or this example out of the textbook. So make sure you do that as well. When you do that online homework, you really should be writing that down, just like you were doing regular textbook homework uh, that you're going to turn in. Uh, that way you can go back and look at it. I know it's very tempting to just do your homework all over scratch paper and type in the answer, but that makes it really hard to go back and look at when it's time to study for a test. If you do use any of the help features in the online homework, be sure you take notes on whatever it says to do with that. Um, and then make sure that when you're working on all of this stuff, if there's anything that you need help with, make sure you get help. Students that are in Calculus 3 often feel like they should not need to get help. Uh, they're in a fairly advanced uh, math class for an undergraduate, and um, nobody that gets to Calculus 3 is bad at math. Uh, so many students are very good at math and are often not accustomed to having to get help. Uh, but there are a few things that make Calculus 3 a little bit unique uh, that I just want to encourage you to make sure that you get help if you need it. 
One of them is that nearly everything we do in Calculus 3 relates back to things that you did in Calculus 1 or, and 2, and we're extending those ideas. Um, so, if you don't remember everything perfectly that you learned in Calculus 1 and 2, sometimes it's hard to extend those ideas. And nobody remembers everything perfectly that they learn in Calculus 1 and 2. Uh, even my very best students have some things that they just don't quite remember all the details of. So make sure you get help with anything that you don't remember. Different students forget different things depending on what your previous teachers emphasized, what you found interesting. Um, so I don't know what you're going to have forgotten. You need to seek out help and some clarification on some of those things from those prerequisite courses if necessary. The other thing is that um, it can be hard to get extra help for Calculus 3 material. For Calculus 1 and 2, not only might you have videos that go with your textbook or your instructor, but there are lots and lots of other videos on YouTube and elsewhere where you can get really good help. It's a little bit more difficult to find those resources as you go further and further up in your math classes. So make sure that you reach out to me. Use our Math Resource Center online tutoring. There's some information about that in Canvas that can help you get help with what you need for the course. The other thing about that is I mentioned that nearly everything we do in Calculus 3 is extending things from Calculus 1 and 2 to more dimensions, more complicated ways of looking at those things, more variables, things like that. Sometimes those extensions are pretty straightforward. And if you have a good understanding of Calculus 1 or 2 content, it's not that complicated to translate that to what we're going to be doing in Calculus 3. But there are other times where transitioning to more dimensions makes things way more complicated. And so particularly for those things where things are a lot more complicated, you may find that you need to reach out and ask for some extra help. So make sure you come to the scheduled uh, study sessions that we have. Reach out to me for extra help. Call me, email me, whatever you need to do. We can Skype, uh, but get that extra help when you need that, especially to make sure those clarifications happen. All this is going to be really helpful to you because in Calculus 3, uh, unlike maybe the other calculus classes you've had, that last unit that we do, the last chapter, nearly everything we've done all semester comes back and shows up again in that last chapter. And so if there's any gaps in your understanding earlier in the semester, any places where you didn't really have time to focus on learning earlier in the semester or you didn't get help when you needed to early in the semester, that's going to come back to hurt you at the end. So make sure you do all that. The nice thing about that, though, is that students who do these things all semester long really focus on understanding the content as we learn it, often find that that last chapter clicks together very nicely. And for many students, that's their highest test score on that last test, higher than any of their other tests. And it tends to also be very predictive of how students do on the final exam. So if you can make sure you do all these things all semester long, it often means that at the end of the semester, things go pretty nicely for you and you don't have to do a lot of reviewing for the final because everything's coming back in that last chapter. Just make sure that you're not skimping on some of these things because then it can be a, a difficult end of the semester if you, if you didn't quite get the help or focus on the understanding early in the semester. All right, on to some math in those next videos.